Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to this astrological exploration into the topic, how do you like to learn? And we're going to take a look at this topic in a similar way to how I looked at the last topic, which was how do you like to escape? And I'll put the link to that above. You'll be able to click on that and watch that if you missed it. I really enjoyed doing that format and I think a lot of you enjoyed that format as well. So we're going to keep going with these videos. I want to do lots of them, explore lots of different topics where we synthesize the stars. Okay, So we look at something like learning, which we're going to do today. Last time we looked at escaping. Next time I want to look at something like confidence. I thought that would be a really good thing to examine per sign. Where are you confident? So what we'll do is we'll take a look at our methodology. So I'm just going to, I've got the iPad here like last time. What I loved as well about last time's video was the comments section was incredible. You guys fed all of your insights in as well. And I'd love to keep that going because I learn from you guys. And that's also why I wanted to look at the topic of learning. The topic of learning is fascinating to me. I think learning is so important. I think it's the thing that keeps us young and excited and motivated in life. And if you can learn how you like to learn, then you can enjoy that side of yourself even more. And I've learned from all kinds of things. One of the things I've learned about is um, well, how much I like gear having stuff, you know, like I like having an iPad and I like having um, cool journals and notebooks and, you know, every now and then I might treat myself to a new pen or whatever it is. For some reason, things like this help motivate me. Uh, and, and you'll see per sign what kind of um, things motivate you or get you going when it comes to your learning. I'm hoping that's the kind of thing that we can explore through this video. And I'll give you another example of this. It was found that MIT students, when they were asked, how do they like to learn? Do they like just the lecturer? Or do they like the lecturer and PowerPoint slides? Or do they like the lecturer and chalkboards? Just chalk. And an overwhelming majority of students said that they prefer their lecturer with the chalkboard. Isn't that amazing? MIT students, did not want the PowerPoint slides. I find that incredible that they preferred the chalkboard, which I think is really cool. Uh, believe me, if I had a chalkboard, I would use it, but I'm traveling, aren't I? I'm here in Sydney, Australia. When I get back to London, I do have, I've got a little whiteboard type thing, which I used to quite like using. So who knows, maybe that might make a comeback. But uh, for now, I think I'm quite liking this iPad thing. I think this works pretty well especially when I hit record. So I'm going to hit record right now. Three, two, one. Yep, it's recording. Last time I forgot to hit record and it took hours to painstakingly draw everything in again. Okay, let's take a look at the methodology this time. How are we going to explore and investigate this topic per sign? So we're going to synthesize four houses. We're going to have a look at the third house the fourth house, the fifth house, and the ninth house. Okay, so why are we looking at these houses? Well, we're looking at the third because the third really does represent the mind. Okay, and this is the part of the mind where we have our ears, where we listen, right? So we've got listening here as well. So this is how we comprehend. This is how we take life in, believe it or not, through the third house. It's so incredibly important. Now the fourth, we're going to take a look at the fourth because the fourth is, so what do we have here? And we've got, well, up here in the third, we've got Mercury. Okay, I should put that down, Mercury. So the fourth, we've got Moon. Okay, and Moon is Mother. And if you think about it, mother was your first teacher. Okay, so really, really important. Moon, of course, is moon. It's mind as well. But what kind of mind? It's a subconscious mind. 
it's a subconscious mind. We can really see the subconscious mind here in the fourth, in the eighth, and in the twelfth. Now why is that? That is because these are hidden watery houses. And this is where our feelings are. And this is where a lot of inherited stuff is as well. Okay, so you will inherit um, styles of thinking and beliefs and all kinds of things will come into your mind. This is even before you've gone to school. Isn't that incredible? Now, when we take a look at the fifth and the ninth, in both instances, we are looking at father. Okay. So we've got father we can look at from here. Now, what's the difference between the fifth and the ninth? Okay, the fifth house is the place where you teach yourself, actually. All self-taught people, self-teaching, I'll put it here. All self-taught people will have a good fifth house or a great sun or a very good Leo. Okay, so we've got sun here. I should write that down. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the ninth house. We have got Jupiter here, right? And Jupiter is the professor. Jupiter is the expert. Jupiter is the authority. So this is where we learn from an external source, okay? Or where you are a teacher yourself. You could be a teacher here in the fifth as well. Um, you'd be a very creative teacher and you would be a very empowering teacher if you're a fifth house Leo kind of a teacher. You would, um, it's that whole like teach someone how to fish. You know, if, if you're a teacher here in the fifth, yeah, you would be teaching your students how to fish. You'd be teaching them how to teach themselves. You know, that would be really important to you. Or you'd be, you'd be teaching them how to think creatively, how to think outside of the box. If you're a ninth house kind of a teacher, then, you know, we're looking at authority. We're looking at um, believe these rules. And it's a bit more formal and it's a bit more academic, I suppose we could say. So with all of that background, let's go on some journeys, shall we? Let's take a look and see what this is like for your sign. So Aries, welcome Aries. So we're going to take a look at how you like to learn. All right, now I do have some notes here, but I think, who knows, I'll be inspired and I'll say something on the fly that makes sense <laughs> as well uh, and you can share your insights as well if you're a strong Aries how do you like to learn and uh, yeah I'll do my best to see if we can talk through these different signs and see how you like to learn all right so we're looking at Gemini here in the third house Gemini is a dual sign it's Mercury and what I would say here, Aries, is that I believe you're the kind of person who, whose mind can do two things at the same time. So you might be the kind of person who quite like to have music on in the background while you learn. So maybe you're reading and or writing that you like to have music on in the background. There are some people who their mind can't get going unless they've got some stimulation, they've got music or they've got something. Maybe they need to change scene as well. So I'll just write down here two, you can do two things at once. And interestingly, that's good for your mind. That's stimulating. It's not a bad thing. Sometimes people think, oh, should I be more focused? Should I not have the music on? But some people find that they need to have the music on to get them going. And I feel like you might be one of those people. So you can definitely do two things at the same time. If you're finding that it's hard to study or it's hard to focus, then you might benefit from changing scene. Okay, so again, I'm going to relate that here to your third house. Changing scene. 
So working in a coffee shop or changing scene temporarily might be good for you. So if you're finding that music isn't doing it for me, it might mean that you need to change scene. Now what you want to check with this is you want to have a look at where is your Mercury. You also want to have a look at where is your Mars, interestingly, okay? If you're the kind of person who needs to change scene, it could be that your Mercury has a connection with Mars and that changing scene is beneficial for you. If you've got your Mercury connected in with Venus um, or Moon possibly or even something airy like Saturn, you might find that music is helpful to you. That is something you might find there. Now we're going to take a look at your fourth house. So what have we got going on here? Well, one of the things I would suggest to you Aries is that you can definitely study alone. Uh, and this is dependent on the position of your moon or the position of your sun. But you might find that it's good for you to study alone. You can also um, focus really well at night. Focus at night could be good for you as well. Again, have a look at the placement of your moon. That might give you some clues there, but you might find studying alone or, or, or at night time is good for you. The other thing that you'll find is that mother, you might, mm, mother might have been a good teacher for you. Again, depending on where your moon sits. Mother might have been a good teacher for you. Mother might be someone you can take her advice. You might also like to consider the advice of your father. We'll have a look here. Father's advice could be helpful to you. Again, you'd want to look at the position of your son to see how well your son is placed. The other thing, Aries, that you can do is that you can learn by teaching, definitely. You're a terrific teacher. You're a terrific communicator. You're definitely a terrific teacher. Definitely, definitely. And you'll want to have a look. Sorry, I'm just realizing I'm being eaten by mosquitoes. <laughs> I think that's a good omen. Maybe. I don't know. Let's have a look here. The sun. And we've got Jupiter sitting naturally here as well. Well, depending on where your Jupiter sits, I mean, your Jupiter could be in the first house. And depending on where Mars is, I was just about to say you could be an excellent coach. But Aries, I mean, you depending on, yeah, see, I'd want to be looking at Jupiter and Mars to see what kind of a coach you'd be. But that's another tangent. Let's come back here to the fifth and ninth houses. What have I got here? You can definitely learn by teaching. That is a good way for you to learn, Aries. You teaching, you sharing is going to help you learn something better. Okay, and there are other signs as we get into the zodiac, you'll see there are some signs that are really good at learning on the job but what I would say for you is that you just are a natural teacher and that is a terrific way for you to learn a subject definitely self-teaching we want to see the position of where your son is if your son for example is exalted in the first house then you'll absolutely love you'll be very self-taught you'll love teaching yourself things um, you'll definitely have that ability beautifully there. And your Jupiter. Now, if your Jupiter is seated, um, say, for example, anywhere in these collective areas, you'll be such a terrific teacher. Uh, you'll be so good at that. People will love to learn from you. So I'll just write here, natural teacher. And if there are any other insights, Aries, put them in the comments below. Tell me how do you like to learn? I want to know. I want to see how your planets are functioning. So let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Let's take a look and see how do you like to learn? 
what helps you to learn all right well if we're having a look at your third house definitely listening to audiobooks listening to audios at night those teachings will go deep into your subconscious okay so definitely nighttime and listening to audios audiobooks lectures hearing someone talk that's going to be really really good for you if we're having a look at your fourth house i'm going to say studying at home alone is good for you as well so studying alone oh definitely you're one to study on your own actually you're not a, uh, well you could be a collaborative learner but i think you'll do better if studying for you is more meditative alone contemplative by yourself that's going to be really really good for you and i'd imagine that you're a creative learner and you're also a visual learner as well so visual things matter to you definitely so we've got here visual learner learner you could also be self-taught as well self-taught with that leo there in the fourth house and then if we take a look at virgo and capricorn i love this about your uh, sign taurus because you guys are the ones who can learn on the job so if you are it's almost like you need to you need to do something you can't just sit and read and like oh, okay i'm going to memorize all this stuff no that doesn't work for you taurus i think you really you're very much uh hands-on i'm going to write here hands-on and on the job on the job you learn by doing by doing by working by making something creating being creative starting a business starting an online course monetizing um, your teachings yeah we can definitely put that here monetizing your teachings i'm going to put that here with um with virgo monetizing your teachings as a service That would be really good for you, Taurus. That was a little snapshot, a little insight there. Let me know, Taurus, how do you like to learn? What works for you? Are you, uh, can you just sit and quietly read a book and take it in? Or do you need to be out there in the world, teaching, sharing, giving, on the job, making it happen? Let me know, I would love to hear from you. And we are now gonna welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to fold my notes so they don't fly away. How are you doing, Gemini? All right. Well, how do you like to learn? This is such a big topic, isn't it? But we're going to take a look here. This one's quite interesting because the first point I'm going to make is to say you, whoops, you can learn by cultivating or forming an opinion cultivating an opinion it's something like sharing your opinion is part of your creative expression forming an opinion and then sharing it with your peers with people around you 
something along those lines. I think that could be really amazing. Now, I also think there's something stand out about you. There's, you're not afraid. You're not afraid to be alone in your opinion either, Gemini. Not afraid to intellectually stand alone. And your views could really set you apart. Especially when it comes to your thinking. There's something about, and it depends on where your sun is as well, uh, that I'd be looking for that. But there's something about you that you're not afraid to intellectually stand alone. You can definitely, so you learn by cultivating your opinion. So you kind of look at what other people have to say, but what's important to you is what you think and your opinion. That definitely matters a lot. I can also see that competition is important when it comes to learning. So you might have felt as a child, you might have felt compared um, at school. Compared at school, you might not have liked that. So depending on where your Mercury sits, you might not like that you were compared at school. That If your Mercury was, say, for example, I don't know, in Virgo, in the fourth house, maybe you liked uh, that you were compared. But equally, if your Mercury is, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe somewhere else, maybe in the sixth house or something, I don't know, maybe you didn't like being compared at school. There's also something about competition. So there is some desire to stand out and to be alone in your thinking, but there is something of being compared, competing, and again, depending on your Mercury and depending on your sun, how you enjoy the competition or don't enjoy the competition, that I would have to look at, but um, I am getting this thing that comparison is a thing here. The other, way that you could learn something or enjoy learning is um, through games or puzzles or competitions maybe that maybe you like that again I'd want to see your mercury and how well that is seated possibly also your Mars really really interesting another thing about Virgo is that again, I'm also getting Gemini that you could be someone who enjoys studying alone. Um, you're also, because of Virgo here, I'm also seeing that you might be, this might actually be more to do with your Leo, actually. Let's have a look here. So, big picture thinker. And that could also be to do, so definitely with your Leo or your Aquarius. Uh, big picture here as well. I think you could learn a lot from expanding out to the big picture, but drilling down into the mercurial detail. And another way that I think you can learn a lot Gemini is through your connection with the world you know your interest in travel markets trends zeitgeist there's something in the air There's something about being connected. When you're connected, I imagine that's when you feel like you're learning. Connected in with the now kind of thing. Also future type stuff, future thinking, you might enjoy that as well quite a bit. Wow, Gemini, well, 
let me know in the comments below how you got on with that I'd love to hear from you we are now going to welcome cancer cancer welcome thank you so much for joining I just want to say cancer if you're finding the visuals here to be a bit different it's because they are so my t-shirt is different I'm recording this on a different day basically um, I recorded the first part of the video so from the intro through to end of Gemini on Sunday afternoon and it was a lovely Sunday afternoon and I don't think I even combed my hair or put on any makeup so I've done the same today <laughs> I haven't really combed my hair I haven't put on any makeup except for a bit of lipstick um, and I've got a different t-shirt and I might be positioned a bit differently the lighting might be different but I just thought I'd let you know in case you're watching the whole video through and you're like hang on a minute she looks different something's not right I've been watching today I'll just tell you quickly before we get into your thingy I've been watching the news and all the news about Kate Middleton and how she put out a photoshopped photo poor thing I mean she just wanted to put a photo obviously where everyone looked really happy so she did some photoshopping and now the whole world is on her case I really feel for her anyway I think I might cover that in the in the upcoming monthly which I'm going to record early this month as well because I will be flying back to England and hopefully when I get back to England I click into the time zone quickly I think I will because I always do I, I get into the time zone very quickly there and I'll be uploading more videos more content uh, and yeah more on it when it comes to videos because I know I've been a little bit distant and I don't like that it's just that I have been busy here as well with other kind of things in addition to all the things that I do my business my work my videos um, but yeah there's more going on all right let's take a look so cancer what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit record on my iPad I've got the notes here as well I do have some handwritten notes so We'll do a bit of both we're going to explore we're going to see what comes in the now very often when i make a video like this things come in just on the fly and that is do you know what that is that is also because of your energy i do believe there is something that happens when i make a video because the future has already happened so you are watching you are part of the group your energy does feed into the work i do here isn't that incredible anyway let's take a look so i think this is recording good and hopefully the pen size is the same so now we're taking a look at your third house and what do we have here we have got virgo by the way it's quite a bit more windy today so hopefully this I'll just make sure that my audio is recording as well yes it is good because that helps okay let's take a look cancer Virgo you've got Virgo here in the third house it could be Virgo that when you were young especially uh, you might have felt compared you might have felt compared to peers uh, and that could be a driving force motivating you to learn it could be that you now let's have a look at speaking I sort of want to have a look yeah speaking if there were a lot of people around you it might have been hard to speak up as well because I'm also kind of just looking here at Taurus whoops at Taurus as well I was just looking at speaking ability speaking up all that kind of thing but uh, let's come back here to Virgo I, I try not to get distracted or go down tangents it's not easy um, yeah I've definitely got here that you know competition is a factor so how your mercury is seated is going to matter if your mercury is seated very well so let's say it's seated right here in the third you know competition could be a good thing you might enjoy competition some people it, it's fascinating to me some people require competition it motivates them to work I'm not that kind of person at all but I have seen people I've seen this on YouTube where I've seen people who they watch someone else's video 
and then immediately after or two three four hours later they have they have to publish a video and they've just been inspired by the person they've just watched that happens you could be one of those people depending on your mercury if your mercury is not seated well then you would probably hate competition you wouldn't like it something here about chaos I'm just thinking about as well what's the deal with chaos Maybe you're quite good at bringing perfection to chaos. So there might be something about the way you learn. Maybe you like it to be quite neat and orderly, or there's something about the process of learning for you can be a process of bringing about perfection or something along those lines. So we do have, let's have a look at this thing here. So we've got chaos. Bringing order to chaos is what I want to say there. Okay, bringing order. To chaos. So when you learn, you might get that feeling that you are bringing order to chaos, maybe in your mind as well. You might enjoy the clarity of thought, the clarity of thinking. So if there's lots of information, you might quite enjoy, and as well, because we've got Mercury here too, so I'm kind of thinking about this concept of focusing, but it's interesting, and it, you could be, do you know, you do have this here, you could be doing two things at once. So like, I think, who was it? I think, I think it was Aries. I said in Aries that um, you've probably got the kind of mind where you could listen to music and study at the same time. So we do have that two things at once here. But some kind of desire for perfection through learning. Yeah, I've got this thing about you could listen to music at the same time as study. Let's take a look at Libra. All right, so we've got Libra. You've got beautiful social Libra here in your fourth house. So there was definitely a, a social component to early learning. And I think it might be that when you were young, um, perhaps that was the fun of learning. Maybe in early earlier childhood or um, school days or something like that maybe you quite enjoyed going to school and I think I was looking at that with Libra as well so that is quite interesting just Libra if you're a Libra ascendant or Libra moon or something like that yeah I was looking at the question there that did you like school it's an interesting one because cancer ascendant you know you could be very shy uh, you could be a very shy person, but yet in those early years, things could have been quite social. How much you liked socializing could really depend on your Venus placement. Okay, so I've got, I'll just write here social component to learning. And depending on where your Venus here, so if your Venus, say for example, is here in Pisces, wow, I would imagine you'd love school, you know, or you'd love the social aspect of school as well, or you'd love being with others. We'll take a look at Scorpio and Pisces. I'll just rub that out. Scorpio and Pisces, what do we have here? All right, so. Yeah, one thing about learning is that you definitely excel at deep learning and research. So you can investigate something very deeply.
there's also because we've got Pisces here this is the all is one this is everything so you can consider a lot of things broadly as well consider broad aspects The big picture, we could say that here. It's interesting, big picture, we can see that in a lot of, whoops, the big picture, there we go. And yes, with Scorpio here in your fifth house, this is um, as well, deep investigation. Yeah, and I've got here real dot joiner. You like unification theories. So I think actually instead of big picture, why don't I put dot joiner and unification theories? So, or just dot joiner. Now with Scorpio being here in your fifth, you can learn things intuitively. Okay, and you're a Cancer Ascendant here, so yeah, this is, this is for sure. So, intuitive learning. Um, you may not need textbooks. You can possibly get so good at, if you're good at stilling your mind, for example, um, really stilling your mind you will just you, you can just learn a subject intuitively no textbooks needed whoops no textbooks needed and that's later in life so maybe in the early part of life you know learning is quite traditional but definitely as you age, I would say, um, you can you can go off-road. <laughs> you don't need textbooks or, or anyone else if, if that doesn't appeal to you. You can really learn directly and intuitively because the real intelligence of life, which according to various uh, teachers, so let's say Jiddu Krishnamurti is one and Lester Levinson, if you study their works really deeply, uh, I've studied both of them really deeply, and they talk about an intelligence that sits, and it's a singular intelligence, it's, it's one intelligence, I do believe they talk about, and it sits just behind the mind. And that's why when we meditate, if we meditate, then uh, you will start to interact more and more with that sort of infinite intelligence, and it will teach you directly. So Cancer, you're really uh, capable of that kind of learning. All right, well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome Leo. Leo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Just wanna say, Leo, if things look different, I am wearing a different t-shirt and I probably look different. It's, I'm recording on a different day. Just wanna let you know. All right, um, we're gonna take a look at you. So let's have a look at your third house what we've got going on here so whoops we've got Libra here okay oh, I love this you guys you're the open-minded learner and you're able to learn from all different kinds of teachers different types of people you know um, you can learn from a variety of people there are some people and I've seen this Sometimes in, uh, oh, let me try and think, I'm just sort of thinking of people I know and there's someone I know who's got, she's got quite a bit of Taurus, there's someone else I know, yes, she's also got quite a bit of Aries and it's really interesting, this person I know, she can't learn from too many people, she doesn't like it, she's like, I just, she's like, I have my teacher and that's it, you know, I have, I have one or two maximum, you know, and that's it, she, she's very much like that, whereas you'll meet some people who will learn from everybody. And Leo, I think that's you. I think you've got a real capacity to learn from everybody. And especially if you've got a good Venus. So I'll just write here, can learn from everyone. 
learn from everyone. Um, especially depending on how your Venus is, okay? And look at that Venus Lords, your 10th house here. So 10th house is, if you've got a good strong career, you will learn from everybody at your workplace, you'll learn from your bosses, you'll learn from your employees, you'll learn from everyone you interact with. And they say that smart people learn from everybody. There's some quote, I'll see if I can find it and put it on the screen, but there's some quote about smart people are the ones who learn from everyone. And I really like that kind of idea. I think that's really true. So depending on your Venus, that's going to make a real difference. Uh, and that's going to show how you learn from everyone. All right. So even, even if your Venus is, say, for example, debilitated, right? Just having a look at where is Venus debilitated. I mean, even there, you're going to learn from everyone because that's Venus in a place of work. So again, this is a wonderful Venus and you will learn from everybody, everybody you interact with. So that's really, that's a really powerful asset to have. Now, if we have a look at Scorpio, I've got here that you can very deeply go into one thing. You can go deeply into one thing. You can definitely master a particular thing and go really deep in that direction. So that's pretty amazing. The other thing is that you might be a kind of person who likes having nice gear. So if you watch the introduction, I talked about, I'm a bit like this. I like having my iPad and my Apple Pencil. And you know, when I got that, it did motivate me to get a bit more organized and write down my thoughts on here. And um, if you've ever watched Ali Abdul, his whole channel was about gear. You know, and he taught productivity and he taught students how to study better and all that kind of thing. And it's interesting, the whole channel was about gear. It's so cool because he'd always review all the latest Apple products and all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, let's go back to Scorpio being here. But the, the, well, that's where I got into it because Scorpio, there's a dependency relationship here on the two eight axis, right? So that's why I see. So I see having gear as a bit of a crutch, actually. I don't mean that in a negative way. Um, I'm a person who really likes, you know, I love having a nice journal, you know, and I've had, I've had all kinds of beautiful journals and, you know, leather bound and fabric bound and um, just really pretty designs on the front and things like that. Like it just, I don't know, that, I love stuff like that. But I can see that, Leo, you might have some of that as well. The other thing is, even though you're a really independent thinker, you know, you're ruled by the sun, okay, but, so you're a very independent thinker, you're probably quite fearless intellectually in many ways as well, even though you've got all of that going on, there might be some subject areas where you actually like a bit of hand-holding, where you kind of maybe want someone to walk you through or talk you through or teach you step by step or teach you from the beginning and I can relate to this one because um, and I'll put that here under Scorpio I'll put here hand holding whoops hand holding so the reason I say that and I actually have um, a tinge of this myself when I was watching sister Wendy Beckett teach art and talk about art and I used to find the art world really intimidating but then I would watch sister Wendy Beckett videos and she would make me feel just I don't know like at home in that world and like it's like when I'm with her I can study that subject and I can begin to understand and that was an area where I really needed a bit of hand holding whereas there are some subject areas where oh I don't want any hand holding it's like oh go away I don't want anyone else you know but there are some subject areas where I really want someone to hold my hand and tell me how this whole thing works 
So yeah, I think you might find that um, in some areas, okay, not everything. Because as I say, you are a Leo ascendant. Now let's take a look at Sagittarius and Aries. What do we have going on here? Oh, this is beautiful. You can definitely learn deeply by teaching. Deeply by teaching. And I'm going to do a, a master's episode on, and I'm, I can see his picture in my mind. Um, what's his name? He's a teacher who, brilliant physicist, I think he was. And he said that if you can explain it to a five-year-old, then you know it. And that's true. That is true. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, gosh, I've, I've forgotten the guy's name, but I remember his chart. I'm sure he's got an exalted moon. But anyway, Leo, I think you are someone who will learn your subject matter even deeper by teaching it. There'll be something, so like when you are explaining the subject to someone else, that's when it becomes more clear in your mind and you know the subject even better. So we've definitely got you as a teacher here in your fifth. Um, and here in the ninth as well, like Aries, Ascendant, you are a natural teacher. So um, here we've got, now let's see if I've got any notes here, Aries. Yes, you're going to have unique opinions fearlessly. Unique opinions fearlessly. So when it comes to teaching, you will have a unique view that's just yours. And yeah, that's pretty amazing. And you'll share it fearlessly. Um, that would be a real joy for you. Wow, Leo, I've really enjoyed studying your sign. I could talk more, but let me know your insights below. I'd love to hear from you. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo. All right, Virgo, what do we have here? So we have got do you know what we do have? We've got cockatoos in the tree up there. So they're gonna be joining us. Okay, I've just realized the time is slipping away. I've gotta get a shuffle on here. All right, so Scorpio, we've got Scorpio. Okay, Virgo, you can be refreshed by taking breaks from learning. So Virgo, if you don't know something like the Pomodoro technique, Pomodoro technique, you definitely want to check that out. Now, what is the Pomodoro technique? The Pomodoro technique, I think, is where you study for 25 minutes and then you take a little five minute break. And then you study for 25 minutes and then you take a little five minute break. And then you study. So you might want to experiment with that and you might want to see what is your rhythm and routine because for you, it might be longer. If you've got Saturn placed here, then you know um, you might want to work for 40 minutes and then take a 10 minute break. Or you might want to work for a couple of hours and then have half an hour or whatever it is. So you definitely want to experiment with taking breaks in order to help you learn. Okay, so stopping could actually be important and where you integrate. Uh, the learnings. So it's like when Barbara O'Neill teaches that thing about HIIT. She teaches like when you're on the rebounder, you should do a full on, you know, minute or whatever, and then you should do a half hour, a half, no, a full on minute of exercise and then 30 seconds of rest and things like that. So I feel like that could be good for you. Uh, we've got Sagittarius here in the fourth house. So you can definitely, oh my goodness, of all the people who are gonna do research, you can research the deepest, I think. Um, when it comes to doing research, yeah, wow. Capable of deep, I'm gonna underline that, research. 
So when you want to drill down into something, when you want to investigate something, when you want to explore, you'll go, yeah, deep, deeper than anyone I could imagine. Now we've got Capricorn and Taurus here. So these are earthy signs here, which can be representative that you might like to have nice gear. Um, so I'm going to write nice gear here in the ninth. You know, if you're an academic, you'll have the best MacBook, you'll have the best uh, laser pointer or whatever for your screen, or I don't know, you'll have the nicest screen or whatever. So there's a nice gear component to this. But there's definitely this thing of learning on the job. Learning on the job. So when we learn on the job, and this is Capricorn here as well, learn on the job. So when it's this thing of you learn better on the job or by doing, that does mean that you, and yeah, you've got Saturn lording your six here as well. So it's a service thing. It's like you'll figure it out for someone else. You'll be really good at that. Oh, of course, you're Virgo ascendant as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you want to check the position of your Saturn to see how this works in your life. But you're definitely one to learn on the job. And the reason is because you're going to do it for someone else. That, that's when it's superb. Like, so if you have to figure something out for other people, you're going to do amazing at that. That's, that's a real gift. I've also got here, just like Gemini, I'm pretty sure I said this with Gemini, that for you, it'll be great to zoom in and zoom out. So you're definitely a big picture person. So we do have big picture here. That's Capricorn. That's, yeah, big picture thinker. But there's also, because of your, and depending on your Mercury as well, it's like you zoom in and zoom out. And it's through that zooming in and zooming out process you will learn. So it's kind of like, it's good for you to read the table of contents first. Read the structure of the book, flip through the book and you know, skip ahead and read little bits ahead and then get that big picture, get the table of contents in your mind and then fill it in with the little detail. And you might find that to be motivating and helpful for you while you learn. Well, Virgo, I'd love for you to share your insights below. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So Libra, we're going to take a look at your chart. We're going to see here just the signs. Now, I've got you as somebody who liked school. I've got here, did you like school? Question mark. It's interesting because it depends on the placement of your Saturn. Now, even if your Saturn is exalted, so that's your Saturn here in the first house, it's really interesting for Libra Ascendant, exalted Saturn is a bit of a mixed bag. Okay, I've seen um, exalted Saturn Libra people who they don't have the best relationship with Saturn, even though they might be quite Saturnian and they might um, Saturn might be doing a huge amount for them uh, and it's a great planet for them but there'll be a mixed bag element here so this is quite interesting did you like school but Libra you're all about balance so you would be able to look back on your school days and say yeah I, I liked learning I liked institutionalized learning okay so we're going to start here actually institutionalized learning is what happens here when Capricorn is in the fourth house. So you're less likely to be homeschooled uh, as a Libra ascendant. Isn't that interesting? You'll definitely be at school. So let's take a look here at the third house. I've jumped ahead. Why did I jump ahead? Well, I did. Um, 
Yes, okay, I've got here that father would have been a very important early teacher of yours. Father is key here with Sagittarius being there that something about listening to father or father's voice was very important to you or maybe you had um, a male teacher who was very important to you. If it's not your dad, it might be a male teacher who was, who was really impactful or important to you. There's also the capacity for deep uh, listening. When you listen to others, you will pick up details that other people would miss or you'll understand things very deeply just by listening. So listening to audiobooks is great for you. Or even recording even recording your own voice on an audio to um, listen to something back. I'm just kind of thinking, gosh, I could have done with that as a student. Like when I had to memorize things, I used to write things repetitively a lot and I used to do all of that. But nowadays we've got iPhones and iPads and computers and all these great things. And you can use these tools to record your own voice and then to listen back and take it in in a deep way. You, you can really do that here, Libra. Yeah, audiobooks, really good tool for you. Now, the other thing, Libra, I love about what you've got going on here is that you can be um, a very innovative thinker. You can think outside the box. You can definitely teach yourself and you can definitely um, use technology to help you learn. Yeah, I'm strongly getting that here. So use technology. Self-teach, uh, self-taught. You know, you can teach yourself how to make web pages and edit um, film and well, whatever Thing you need to learn or, or whatever that is uh, because you've got Aquarius there and in terms of the style of teaching if you're going to be a teacher you'd be you'd be a great teacher and it would be through conversation conversation you'd be a fun teacher as well fun um, depending on say Mercury and Mars you could be quite a humorous teacher as well uh, if you had your Mars here oh that'd be great you could yeah you'd be cracking jokes your students would be loving it you know um, you'd be a fun teacher definitely if you're going to teach <gasps> Libra, I'm going to crack on. I wish I could talk more and more and more. Um, some of the other signs, I, I went, I waffled a bit and now, because I've only got this battery and then I don't have another battery, so I've got to crack on. Libra, I'm gonna love you and leave you. We are now gonna welcome, let me know your insights below. We are now gonna welcome Scorpio. All right, Scorpio, let's get into it. So your one is full of contradictions really big contradictions when it comes to learning because if we take a look at your houses you've got Saturn here then you've got Jupiter and Moon here which is really very interesting so let's deal with Saturn first the Saturnian houses now depending on where your Saturn sits you might have liked school but equally, school might not have been enjoyable for you as a kid. That is quite possible. It wouldn't surprise me if you're like, yeah, I didn't like school when I was a kid. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, one of the things that Saturn might have done is it might have slowed down education for you. And I'm looking at this point 
uh, for both Capricorn and Aquarius here that education might have been slowed down for you in the early years. The other thing is Saturn could have or could have the impact of slowing down your mind. Now this I believe is a wonderful thing okay because when your mind is slowed down by Saturn so this is like Saturn conjunct moon or Saturn aspect on moon as well could do this um, or even sometimes I've seen in some people's charts Saturn Mercury and things like that when Saturn slows things down you actually can grasp it better and you can really get a handle on things and things are more clear sometimes so if let's say for example you were told when you were young that you're slow to learn or something or something like that if anyone ever said that to you that's such an asset because such people learn things very well and um, it's it's so much better so if you were a slow reader or any of that or you know I'm a slow reader I, I read very slowly I've got Saturn aspect on my moon and I've been so grateful for it because it has slowed down my thinking when I was at university everybody was smarter than me and they figured everything out quicker than me and I was always very slow I've always been very slow I'm a slow person <laughs> So I, I'm, not, I'm not Scorpio, but I, I really relate to um, some of these things, what I'm just seeing here. And um, yeah, I'm grateful for it. It has been so good for me. So value this because the slowness will actually enable you to handle big thoughts. Okay, so big thoughts are right here. Um, big thoughts also systems thinker because of the slowness you can actually um, take things that are a lot bigger so again we've got Jupiter here right we've got Pisces here so when it comes to teaching as well you know you can teach um, big things like yeah this is quite profound teach all is one theories and things like that or um, you know, the theory of everything and all these kind of things like you can handle all of that you know and I'd imagine that if you are teaching your style would be uh, mothering <laughs> mothering I'll put that here but if you if you have like a really lovely moon let's say you've got your moon right here in the ninth oh people would love to learn from you people love that mothering that beautiful mothering um, sort of energy or if you've got your moon here in Taurus people love this kind of um, people will feel nourished by your teachings there we go nourished by your teachings and some people maybe they didn't have any interest in the subject you were teaching but if you've got such a great moon uh, people will come to you just to learn that subject they'll suddenly develop an interest in your subject they'll be like hey I want to learn that subject I don't know why but I want to learn it Scorpio let me know your insights below we are now gonna welcome I have to I have to move on because we're running out of time we are now gonna welcome Sagittarius Sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining so what have you got going on Sagittarius well you guys are so keep doing that there we go you guys are open-minded and you can definitely listen to a lot of teachers so you're very open-minded whoops and lots of teachers 
you will have lots of teachers, lots of voices, lots of people to look up to and admire. I would imagine the people that you do look up to and admire, they could well be uh, teachers, definitely, and people that you learn a lot from. Now, I do imagine that you would enjoy theories of everything. Yes, big picture stuff. So here we do have, um, I'm going to write down here, ultimate dot joiner. You're brilliant at joining the dots that other people don't see because this is hidden here. So, yeah, brilliant dot joiner. Yeah, you'd be brilliant at um, connecting things that other people don't see. You will have that ability and you'll just be doing that intuitively. Now, when it comes to leadership, you might like to study leaders or leadership. You'll teach yourself how to lead others as well. So when it comes to being a leader, this is something that is entirely self-taught in you and you'll do it your way. And as a teacher, you would definitely empower your students. To think for themselves, to think outside the box, to not need you as well. I think you would be that kind of teacher. You could teach your students how to stand alone I can imagine that you wouldn't you wouldn't want any um, dependency relationships with your students. You'd be like, well, no, you you would empower your students, definitely, Sagittarius. Because I'm looking here at this axis right here, and there's always a lot of independence uh, on that line. But Sagittarius, you can let me know in the comments below any additional insights. I would love to hear from you. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. So we're going to take a look at your third house. We've got here, whoops, I keep doing that today. What do we have here? Oh yeah, this is fantastic Capricorn. And you're a Capricorn, look at this. So you're already Capricorn. Capricorn always deals with the big stuff, right? And you guys can take in vast quantities of information. Okay, vast. So I'll put here take in vast quantities of information. Yeah, that, that is good. That's a great thing to have. And depending on where your Jupiter is, that will show you the type of thing that you like to take in as well. So that would be interesting to take a look at. Now from a young age, you would have shown leadership qualities. And you're also the kind of person who could teach the teacher. So this is very interesting. You could teach the teacher and I was thinking of someone like this who at university he um, oh he was such a genius this guy he was in computer science so I did I studied a bachelor of information technology he was doing bachelor of computer science and of the 400 students in computer science um, he was one of the best like, not one of the best, the best. I should correct that. Because what I'm about to tell you, you'll see what I mean. The lecturer was there and there's about 400 of us. So in my degree, we had about 20 odd people in my degree, but computer science had about 400. 
Anyway, 400 young students sitting there and um, the lecturer is there and he's trying to remember how many servers of that particular type there are in the world and he's kind of fumbling around he doesn't know he said I think there are maybe 12 servers like this in the world or something like that and my friend Matt pipes up and he says he just started lecturing he just kind of and there's there are 400 people in this hall and he just sort of raised his hand and said no there are actually 14 of these servers and two of them are located here and three of them are there and this he just started lecturing it was mind-blowing so Capricorn and do you know I don't know what his chart is or was or I, I only knew him at university so but he did look like a Capricorn and he had that Capricorn sort of a look to him uh, I, I think he was so you could teach the teacher definitely if you had to now the other thing is oh I do like this you've got Taurus here so you're definitely inspired by art and beauty now why does this matter this does matter to some people some people they need like when they're learning something it has to be beautiful or stylish or something like that I know that sounds really superficial but it's kind of true and if you've ever watched the videos by Ali Abdal you'll see that he would write these beautiful notes and everything looked fantastic everything looked like you could film it and um, and he did he filmed all of his notes and you know how he uh, would brainstorm or you know do those diagrams or whatever it was he filmed all of that and that counted for him that that made a difference so you might be that way Capricorn where maybe you like your notes to look a certain way or or that you get inspired by seeing someone else's beautiful notes or something like that I don't know but some of that stuff might count and as part of your service to the world you can definitely teach right your service to the world world could be teaching you might find as well that in the workplace you're a natural teacher you're a natural leader and I do think that leadership and teaching there's quite a crossover there and if we have a look at the chart you know leadership and teaching where do we see that whoops we see that in these houses so that makes perfect sense that there is quite a crossover between teaching and leadership I think the two definitely go hand in hand and I would imagine that that is regardless of what you do you might not be a professional teacher but you will be teaching as part of your work uh, there'll be some component of teaching going on in there Capricorn thank you so much for joining let me know your insights below I would love to hear from you we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining by the way Aquarius I should have been saying this at the start of each sign if things look different um, I'm wearing a different t-shirt and stuff like that it's because I am recording on a different day <laughs> sorry about that things have just my year is not going to plan but I, I think I'm going to start my year when I get back to England and you'll see things are going to work a much more smoothly there okay let's take a look so Aquarius what have you got going on here well you're Aquarius so naturally you're a fearless thinker and you might not like bugs <laughs> on your iPad who knows little omen there uh, you're a fearless thinker you're an innovator and you're happy to intellectually stand alone I said that about someone else here forgotten um, intellectually you can fearlessly stand alone
Now you might be one of those people whom I talked about in the introduction uh, as wanting to have nice stuff, <laughs> okay? Having good gear, having an iPad, whatever. Some of that might be important to you. Um, you could be inspired by beauty and art, which I said about Capricorn as well. And sometimes when, this is the other point that, yeah, I haven't particularly been making. I did write about uh, cross training on the back here because when I was looking at all the different features, I've got here ways of learning and there's lots of different ways of learning. And one of the things that I thought about was cross training. Um, and Aquarius, I'm, I would imagine that this, this is exactly you. You might, so I'll put here cross training. Let's say you're a scientist, okay, and you love learning science and maybe that's your thing and you're all about science, but you get inspired by beauty and art. But it's like that when you do your scientific thing, that's like you doing your art, okay? So I would imagine that you've got that kind of thing going on. So when someone asks you, well, how, how come you're such a good scientist? How, you know, how are you so good at that? And you're like, well, I'm really inspired by, I don't know, like a, a musician or something. Like you might quote a musician and say, well, actually, I learn all my science by studying the songs of Michael Jackson or something like that, right? Something <clears throat> completely left field. And, and people were scratching their heads going, huh, what? I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. But you would get that, <laughs> you know, you would understand. You'd be like, well, yeah, of course I can learn my craft by being inspired by that person over there who does something completely different, you know. So, and th this is all deep intuitive stuff because we are looking here at the fourth house. So, yeah, I, I can see that happening uh, through your fourth house there. Now, I think you can learn as well, learn through great conversations. You know, some people, they don't learn from books. They learn everything through talking to people, through um, their social side. They kind of pick things up from their peers or pick things up by watching other people speak or you know it's amazing how how people really learn you know sometimes it's not just books uh, that's one way but I would imagine Aquarius that you can learn through conversations definitely and as well I could imagine that you'd be a good teacher, but where would you be a good teacher? Now I'm looking at your ninth house and I'm seeing that you could teach uh, corporations in corporate environments. So you could be some kind of consultant or expert. Whoops, expert. That is definitely something that I'm seeing here. And as well, I mean, you've got Sagittarius up here as well. Kind of looking at that now. You could travel and teach, but there's there. this is a more of a corporate sort of a thing or a project sort of a thing, a project by project basis. Let's have a think about this in your ninth house. But how, I think how you teach would be, yeah, as a consultant or as an expert and you're hired kind of thing. So you're hired for a, a set duration, you teach, something like this. I don't know, that's what I'm seeing here. 
Anyway, Aquarius, you can let me know in the comments below how you like to learn, uh, how you like to teach, how you like to share as well. That's important too. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. I'm just checking the time. We're okay. Pisces, in case you've missed it, I, I, in a couple of signs I've been saying that I am wearing a different t-shirt and this is a different day. I apologize. I, I was only able to rec record up to Gemini. So yeah. Okay, let's take a look. So your wealth, Pisces, is your knowledge. Okay, so we've got here wealth. Your wealth is your knowledge. Your wealth is what you know. So learning is hugely important to you because of all the signs, you've got the greatest ability to accumulate a huge amount of knowledge. Isn't that incredible? You can accumulate a huge amount of knowledge. You can accumulate a huge amount of wisdom as well. And this can be a professional thing for you because when we're looking at wisdom, we're looking at uh, the moon and Jupiter. And if we're looking at that here in your chart, yeah, you there's something about your wisdom, also your Pisces, look at that. Um, there's something about your wisdom that is your wealth. Your knowledge and your wisdom is your wealth. It's, it's one of your greatest assets in life. And it will help you to share this wisdom through conversations with others, but specifically with your mother. So if you're very fortunate and your mum's still around, um, equally if you're very fortunate and you have a good relationship with your mother, not everyone does. And you'd want to be looking at your Mercury uh, or the state of your moon or you know you'd want to be looking at certain things to see okay do I have a good relationship with my mum it'll be in the chart um, but I mean you know through your life obviously that's the place to know it but if you do have a good relationship with your mum talk to her about what you're learning and through that conversation it will go in deeper you'll learn it even better so if you have that ability to share what you're learning with your mother, then that would be really helpful. I remember my dad told me that his tutor at university told him that even if he has no one to talk to, he said that his tutor told him that you're, you might be in an empty room and he said, but look at a wall and talk to the wall and he said, teach the wall or, or share with the wall what you're learning and you'll learn it better so that is a pretty great tip right there um, yeah that's what my dad's tutor said talk to the talk to the walls and that that way you will learn your subject even better so I've got here, you can definitely learn through conversations, through speaking, through debating, through talking. Okay, that's this here. Now, the other thing about you, the quality of your thinking, how you think, how you learn, you guys are brilliant at coming up with ideas. You would get a lot of ideas. Um, so you can be taught by the divine through your ideas through your thought space whoops whoops so you're definitely a candidate for getting downloads 
and learning your subject that way. Okay, so again, you're one of those candidates for dealing direct with greater intelligence. Okay, so definitely write down your ideas. Because there could be a lot of wisdom and learning in those ideas. And if we take a look at your ninth house one of the things that you can naturally and easily do uh, and I mean this this is maybe a little bit off topic but I, I think it's relevant and it's relevant for the audience that we have here as well we've got so many light workers you know some of you are astrologers some of you are, you know um, readers of all kinds like we've got all kinds of people watching these and definitely Pisces here we've got a lot of people who are naturally helping others and so I'm just gonna say this one as I see it you've got a natural gift for alchemizing trauma you can teach others how to resolve their trauma you've got a natural gift for that um, teach others how to alchemize trauma and for that I'd be really wanting to see all right I'd be wanting to see where's your Mars where's your Jupiter where's your moon I'd be wanting to look at those things there definitely uh, but yeah Pisces I could keep chatting and chatting I have this is going to be maybe quite a long video I didn't I didn't want it to be too long but anyway I've absolutely loved making this video. Let me know your insights below. As I say, I could keep chatting for all signs. I, I, had, I had, had a lot of fun uh, exploring this topic. Let me know how you got on. Let me know your insights. Let me know how you learn, how you teach, how you take things in, how you share. It's always fascinating hear your insights that's what I loved about last time's video because the the comments section I mean you could just hit pause on me and just read all the comments and learn a ton of astrology from that and that's what I loved about last time's video so let's do the same thing again and um, let me know how you get on in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.